We should rip Baron Trump from his mother's arms and put him in a cage with pedophiles. Still, still up on Twitter, by the way, yeah. right now. No punishments. Like, but, but he apologized. What? I'm sorry. It's too late. Go upstairs. I don't care. <laughs> Over the past week, uh, we've seen another purge, obviously. <laughs> Of cons we, not only have we seen this of conservatives, but we have seen rejoicing from the left. I'm delighted to see this. They're taking out the trash, these awful people, in many cases, wow. encouraging violence, sanctioning violence. Look, you have no right to speak on someone else's platform. Let Milo Yiannopoulos go to GeoCities or MySpace <laughs> or something. He can't go on Facebook. Facebook, and I think I agree a lot. The man's like an anti-Semitic cartoon. <laughs> it's a company, right? Uh, we don't like regulation, then it should regulate itself. I feel like that first guy who was talking, Mr. Honey, Elon Omar's watching it, like, I mean, come on! <laughs> I just, it's it just too like, soft to like, lay right, up for them. We should just do this program like cable news. It would be so much easier. There'd be no prep. Hey, oh, what do no, you right. think, sir? Outrage, and I'm sounding slightly like Woody Allen crossed with the <laughs> nutty professor from The Simpsons, Milo Yiannopoulos. I want to make sure that I, uh, yeah. we're clear about this, and Bill will obviously help clarify this. This is not a, a, a this is not a freedom of speech issue. Okay. Right. So before people yell "private company," I want I want you to hear what we're about to talk, uh, what we're about to discuss, and let's go over kind of the new rules as to what is and yeah. isn't allowed. So just as important as as, as kind of understanding why uh, and which conservatives are banned, is looking at the behavior that's routinely accepted yeah. from the left. So um, there have been clear terms of service violations from the left. P things Tons, like doxing, yes. things like threatening yes. people, things like Tons. inciting people to violence with no consequences. I want yeah. to be really clear. I don't want any preferential treatment. I don't think any, cons well, I do think some conservatives <laughs> do, and we'll have yeah. to get to that in a second. Uh, yeah. I just want to know the rules. And I think that's an important distinction that people need to make. There's either dishonest business practices or right. not knowing where they line up and not applying the law equally. Well, I think to the even just the point in our own experience has been the company is often unclear left hand, right hand yeah. about what the rules yeah. are. Right. Even day to day, even Their even own kind rules. of handling the same videos being handled differently in different yeah. times by different people right. means that there's a level of subjectivity that means that when the company's out there selling its platform as A, in reality it's B. Right. And that is where yeah. you get to the heart of a fraud that, that they're using to build a business platform on. I mean, right. people choose yeah. to use the platforms and spend money on those platforms and give yeah. their data, valuable data, to these companies thinking that they're getting something that they're really not. Clearly don't honor their own rules. So just no. in case you think that you think I'm making this up, Democratic State Representative, uh, we'll talk with Dan Crenshaw about this in a second. Brian yeah. Sims, you guys see this where he, he videotaped yeah, himself? I, I don't know if videotape is a term anymore. People are like, what does that mean, videotape? You mean <laughs> selfie? Come on, Grandpa. He selfie? Is that what you mean? We used to use the term videotape. I just realized how... <laughs> Dated that was. So he, he video, I almost said it again, he videotaped he himself. He video! He selfied himself, which sounds redundant, <laughs> harassing young girls and old ladies praying outside of abortion clinics oh. and offered money to anyone yeah. who would dox them. Lest you think I'm making it up. Hi everyone, uh, Representative Brian Sims here and I am outside the Planned Parenthood at Southeastern Pennsylvania. Oh, no, they're leaving now. A bunch of pseudo-Christian protesters who've been out there screaming young pseudo. girls for yeah. being here. And so here's the deal. I put pseudo in front of everything. To anybody who will identify any of these Makes three. Makes it dead. So we're actually going wow. to Planned Parenthood. I'm going to donate to Planned Parenthood. So look, a bunch of war. white people standing out in front of a Planned oh Parenthood. Wow. Shaming I'm people. Really Let me make this really clear. Uh, an Holy elected crap. official offered money. To anyone who God. would dox pro-life prayer volunteers, you could live the rest of your life with singular purpose, an unbelievable focus in an attempt to, and, and still not accomplish anything that shitty. You could <laughs> set out to do it. Volunteer prayers. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh, pseudo-Christians? What, 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 what does that mean? Don't use religion to what divide. By yes. the way, you're a pseudo Christian because you're you praying. Don't, from my point of view, that's also uh, Alexandria Cortez. She was talking about Cortez was talking about this week. She says those people don't know anything about women's bodies. Talking about the Georgia bill. It's like, well, hold on a second. We don't know anything about women's bodies. All right. After six weeks, the reason it's called a heartbeat bill is because you're stopping a heartbeat. Hmm. Whose heartbeat? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Is is that <laughs> hate speech? Is that is that? I, can I not understand yeah. that because I'm a man, or do I actually just understand you're the party of science? That if you have two hearts, you're a medical marvel. Someone get Ben Carson <laughs> to separate you two. <laughs> this guy, by the way, this is what's also really egregious here is he took the video, he streamed it, didn't just yeah. he yeah. didn't videotape himself. Yeah. He streamed it on <laughs> Periscope. When my in my day, a Periscope was when you took some milk cartons, taped them together, and put a mirror on one end and a mirror on the other. And you went, see, 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 I can look at the top of the car. Oh my God. <laughs> you, you never did that trick. <laughs> No. Everyone did that. Everyone no. did Come that. Come on, everybody did that. Joke. And he Nobody. posted to Twitter. So this this guy obviously feared no consequences. That's right. what bothers me. Doxing, by the way, and targeted harassment, 
expressly outlined as bannable offenses yeah. on mm. Twitter's terms of service. That one's pretty clear. And they should be. This isn't an isolated incident. Remember no. Peter Fonda, the actor? He called for Baron Trump to be abducted and raped by pedophiles? Yeah. Lest oh, you wow. think I'm exaggerating again, and I know my half-Asian lawyer, Bill Richman, gets, he gets a little uncomfortable. He, he thinks does. I'm going too far. Yeah. I'm, this is a quote. Peter, <laughs> Easy Rider. Was Peter Fonda Easy Rider? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We should rip Baron Trump from his mother's arms and put him in a cage with pedophiles and see if mother will stand up against the giant ass she is married to. Now, oh. I know at first glance, that seems pretty cut and dry. Oh. <laughs> but <laughs> but then I see the blue check mark, and I'm all, I don't know what to believe anymore. <laughs> and then it, it, he's still still up on Twitter, by the way, yeah. right now. No punishments. Like, but, but he apologized. What? I'm sorry. It's too late. Go upstairs. I don't care. <laughs> There's yeah. so many things that they have done that that would under under this, the ban that just happened would easily have gotten them kicked off if By they the were way, on the right. Uh, this is also something that's important. It's also illegal. That's something yeah. people need to understand. Threat actually making a threat of violence or inciting people to violence. Mm. You, yeah. This whole idea you can't yell fire in a crowded theater. You actually can. Yeah. If there's a fire in a theater, <laughs> if there's not, I believe the legal term is fraud. Uh, we commonly refer to this as lying. Yeah. Right. The thing is, if you try to respect the laws, they don't abide by the laws. We have people who sign consent. We have people yeah. who say, I agree to appear on yeah. camera, change my mind, and then go to YouTube, say, I don't want to be on there anymore. And YouTube makes us blur it. And we say, well, first off, it's a single party consent state. We're not breaking the law. And we yeah. can show you them giving don't permission. You break YouTube's they say, well, law. We don't care because yeah. we just don't want to deal with the problems. That is the issue. These, these offenses are actually illegal. By the way, hit the notification bell. Uh, actually, just bookmark the channel on YouTube because notifications may not work. Join up, loudofcutter.com <laughs> slash mugclub, and uh, of course, you can leave a rating there on iTunes. So let's compare this with what gets a ban on the right, in right. direct contrast to the leniency given to uh, leftists. Do we have anything right or wrong so far legally? No, I, I actually was going to say that the exact other point would be probably people would hear the end of the first comment and say, okay, so wait, what's your position? That they should be allowed to say these things or that they shouldn't be allowed to say these things? And the point being that there's a disparity, right? The right. whole point right. is yeah. people are being treated differently not because of you know, the certain what they're saying. It's mm -hmm. because of the uh, view that is being espoused by what they're saying. Right. Uh, several of the accounts that were banned, I think, this within the last two weeks, uh, the Acacio Cortez, the parody account, James Woods <laughs> right. was suspended. The MAGA phobia account, which was very surprising to me, yeah. it, it tracked violence against conservatives. <laughs> it's like a it's like a block parent yeah. on Twitter, <laughs> effectively. Yeah. It's like there. someone videotaping an Antifa person punching an old lady in the face saying, hey, watch out for that guy. Like, You're banned. Why? Because you upset the old lady. I was trying to stop You're from getting jail, punched right? she was really upset. Exactly. <laughs> awesome. And paper thin reasons were given. For example, the uh, oh, yeah. the parody account of uh, Cortez would clearly uh, fit the guidelines for yes. Twitter policy. Parody accounts are allowed. Yeah. They, it was clear that it was a parody what, account. What I love is that Twitter said the account was seen as misleading, going a little too close to the source material, I see. <laughs> Bernie's thoughts, it's hard for me to tell the difference. Yeah. Sometimes I have to undo the retweet because I retweet it thinking I'm dunking on Senator Sanders. And I realize, oh, oh wait. it's not him. He really sounded like he was that mad about Pringles. It so this person has emulated his voice remarkably. Yeah. Uh, yes. And then, of course, Facebook and Instagram, they uh, they banned um, people like Milo Yiannopoulos, uh, Paul Joseph Watson, yeah. which yeah. I, I really don't understand the Paul Joseph Watson no. thing. Yeah. Uh, they How claimed, did he get put in that list? Well, they claimed they violated the dangerous individuals policy. Bad. You're dangerous. Uh, now, is that a, is there a legal precedent there for dangerous individuals? Is that a right. law? No, I mean, they, they, they have their own policies, right? And those policies, sometimes they, you know, deign to give us a definition of them. Sometimes they don't. Those definitions often change. It's possible that they have drawn from some statute, but it's not expressly referenced. So, no. Okay. The That's... policy itself does not refer to hmm. any particular law no, it's, when it's... it says dangerous individuals. Well, and what's, what's really dangerous to me, ironically, here is that for, they say someone like Gavin McGinnis designated dangerous individual, came okay, yeah. by Facebook. And now they're saying that anyone who associates with these people could also be a dangerous individual. Well, I don't know how far that necessarily extends. Obviously, yeah. Gavin has been a, a, a has been a colleague of right. mine. We've worked together. Yeah. But then we've had people on this show who we don't agree with at all. Is yeah. that considered association? The rules are never clear. This is the platform <laughs> that actually banned any pictures of anyone even seen wearing our Socialisms for Fig shirt, which, yeah, I, by the way, can be purchased at lighthousecritershop.com, along with this wonderful <laughs> new deplatform, this Crest uh, T-shirt. That's the Crowder Crest. I love that one. But we retroactively Photoshopped all of those pictures with the Socialisms for Fig shirts to abide by the Twitter terms of uh, service. So as you can see, always thinking yeah. one step ahead. <laughs> yeah. Now, That's here's okay. one thing, Imagine. too. A lot of people see that uh, they see any right-wing critique of social media companies as hypocritical. Yeah. Again, if you aren't clear about what your problem is. Conservatives are like, it's not the government's job to regulate private business. But then as soon as they feel 
like they're not getting enough retweets, suddenly it's like, we're launching an investigation. We've got to nationalize tech companies. Long live socialism! <laughs> Bernie, 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 Bernie! I love how that clip was dead silent Ooh. until you could actually hear yeah. the applause break <laughs> carton coming yeah. up. <laughs> <laughs> the flash. So Even his unfunny. audience like, I don't know what to do here. Yeah. I mean, I get he's the affirmative action comedy central <laughs> hire, but we thought he'd make it easier for us to play along. We oh don't want to nationalize social media. No. And this is my proposed solution. This is really why I want to I want to get bills taken. Um, this this allows all parties the freedom to choose. Okay. Yeah. And, and I think it just needs to be as simple as a question needs to be answered officially, legally on the record. These social media companies, in a court of law, they need to decide whether their platforms or publishers, yeah. because those two things are very, very different. A publisher, something like the New York Times, or even Ladder with Crowder, or this channel, yeah. they can monitor content published on their site, they can take, they have to take responsibility for it. Mm -hmm. If they publish defamatory information or they incite violence, they can be sued for that because they're responsible for the content. A platform, which would be more like, say, a, a cell phone company, they provide a network, they don't monitor, they don't censor right. your calls, mm -hmm. okay? Now, the reason that people have referred to these social media companies and have come to know them as platforms is because they've legally been afforded some of those rights not granted to a publisher. And what are those, hmm. some of you might be asking, ones that protect them from being sued as long as yeah. they operate as a platform. So if someone tweets, for example, something defamatory about me, like, I don't know, puts on a fake uh, Nazi symbol yeah. or says yeah, that yeah, I exactly. wanted to kill all the Jews, so, Twitter can't be sued for that as long as they're a platform. But that means if they're a platform, this is how I understand it, and then Bill's gonna correct me here, they right. cannot determine which point of views are allowed, disallowed, pick sides, or try to determine winners and losers just based on point of view. There's a difference between a publisher and a platform, and I think that lately they've been acting in a way that would put them firmly in the territory of publisher, and people don't know the rules. The idea is that is the tool doing it, or is it the person controlling it? And if you're not controlling the tool, then the person who is is the one that's in trouble. So it's the publisher, the one who's putting the message out, and the person who is just the phone line, the tool provider, the platform. Right. There has to be a protection of that because otherwise there would be no financial incentive to be, uh, for example, any kind of platform to provide those kind of tools. Right. If a criminal you know, orders a drug deal over a cell phone, does that mean that we should punish the cell phone companies because they right. should be controlling it? No. And in that same way, the, the companies have changed. Recently, uh, Jack Dorsey actually admitted, surprisingly, uh, in an interview that he found himself to be a public marketplace of ideas and then was talking about his determination as a company that they should be censoring and, and, yeah. and again, censoring yeah. not in the constitutional sense, but no. censoring in, this, in the idea of how they're going to limit what the ideas are. So they are actively choosing it. By actively choosing, they've crossed that threshold from just a neutral platform to a publisher who's choosing the messages they want to put out there and they should be they should be held under so the So how would we do that? Do they should would they be called to testify? Does there need to be a hearing? My point is I think before we get to any kind of regulation is give them the opportunity to answer, make them yeah, choose declare. publisher yeah. or platform in which case I think we'd be talking about like public utility laws. What would that be? They well, have to testify? Some of it could be within the courts, right? So the right. existing yeah. law that's out there. People have asked this question over the years. It's not, you know, it's not like oh just all of a sudden 2019 people are asking this question. Right. But in the past it's been different and we can see it's changed. It's been an accretive change over the years where now they are firmly over the line. It's also very important to conservatives out there. If we if we do this, and this, this is, I think, the route that we should take. Again, comment, let me know. That means that if you're a conservative, you're going to have to accept these rules for everybody. So don't break the law. Right. Don't. Don't yeah. uh, criminally trespass, right, and videotape someone. I'm mean, using that word again. Yeah. Film someone <laughs> on their private property and then claim that you're being... Please don't do that because you can film in a public area in a single-party consent state. You cannot go into someone's right. home or on their lawn and film them there. Just like you can't put out there a false meme that you know to be false to harm somebody just because you don't like them. And that means conservatives are going to have to allow Ilhan Omar, Farrakhan, yeah. to post all the anti-Semitic crap they want by that same token. Twitter, you can't allow Hamas to recruit people, right? <laughs> right yeah. So at yeah. that point, when we say you're a platform, then at least we know, okay, you have to, at least there has to be some semblance of abiding by the law for which all of us can have reasonable expectations. Right now, there are th there's their rule set, and then there's law. And sometimes yeah. you can be obeying one and breaking the other. For example, mm -hmm. Peter Fonda hoping that Baron Trumps get ra raped by pedophiles. Yeah. You would think, oh, I don't know. That seems like a threat. That's something that could be an actual <laughs> offense. Twitter Maybe. says we're 
we're a okay. Yeah. AOC parody, we're a little murky on the legality at that point. Yeah. I just want to know what the rules are, and I think that's yeah. what conservatives need to be pushing for, not locking arms hand in hand with people like Pelosi and people like Cortez, who right. also want sweeping regulation of these companies. Yeah. And I think it's important that people do understand the legality of it and understand the difference between a platform and a, a publisher. And by the way, yeah. unlike what we're talking, we'll talk about Bill Barr with Dan Crenshaw. We have to get to him. He's probably waiting for us. Yeah. Um, this, it, it's. He's, he, he's under no requirement to speak with more lawyers, by the right. way. He's yeah. under no requirement to provide <laughs> yeah. a completely unredacted report no. to the public and or all members of Cong right. Congress. This is a legally relevant question here, yeah. unlike the bar situation, because I know people will accuse the left and the right, no, man, you're all just playing politics. No, no, we just want some clarity. We're calling for right. more transparency, not less. I think that's pretty important because, again, when you talk about sweeping national legislation, it's not yeah. about Donald Trump right now. Again, the MAGA hat wearing people who, who just like to try no, there's going to be someone else in office after President Donald Trump. Yeah. So let's try and take some steps in the right direction, allowing for more freedom, not less. The good news here is we can actually take a first step, low cost, requires very little bureaucratic red tape or any kind of overhaul right away. It only requires the truth. It requires social media companies yeah. to put their money where their mouth is. And if they want to continue to benefit from the umbrella and the legal protection of a platform, Fine. Or do they want to remove it, edit, and censor content based on point of view like a publisher? This can all start with just two yes or no questions. And all that's needed for, for, for to start a revolution really right now in fairness and transparency and honesty is to get these big tech CEOs, the owners, in the hot seat. And all that's required is to get them to answer yes or no. Hey there, if you like this video, this is the part where I would usually tell you to subscribe. But... I can't do it anymore. I'm gonna tell you to subscribe and then YouTube is going to decide that we can't reach you even though you subscribe to this channel and then I'll say hit the notification bell and then the notification bell won't even be there anymore. I don't know what to say. More than likely you'll find my face in a milk carton, but do what you can to stop it. It's just, it's just, it probably won't do much.